Hi everyone! In the previous videos, we learned why React components can re-render themselves, what are unnecessary re-renders, and how to prevent those using uh, composition techniques. Today, I want to talk a little bit about React.memo. It's another useful tool that can help us win that performance battle and prevent unnecessary re-renders from happening in our apps. Now, as we know, React components can have children. And if a parent component that renders a child component re-renders itself, then this child component will also re-render itself. Uh, if this child also has children, then those children will be re-rendered and so on and so forth until every child in this tree re-renders itself. Those chains of re-renders can have a really big performance impact. From previous videos, we already know how bad can it be. And also we learned a few useful techniques on how to stop them from happening using composition. But in case composition is not something that is possible in this scenario, what else can we do? Well, this is where React.memo comes really in handy. The use of it is quite simple. React.memo is just a function that React gives us. It accept, uh, accepts a component as an argument and returns its memoized version as a result. So what we do here is we just wrap our child component in this function and then render it in our parent component as any other child component. Now, what will happen here from a re-render's perspective is this. If our parent component re-renders itself for any reason, React then will try to render all of its children. It will see that child component is memoized, so it will just stop here. A child component that is wrapped in react.memo will not be re-rendered, and uh, of course, all of its children will also not be re-rendered. This code on the screen is very simple, and of course, it will work. But in reality, more likely than not, our child component will have some props. And when it comes to props and react.memo, the story becomes much more interesting and a little bit more complicated. Now, let's add some props to this child component. What will happen now from re-renders perspective? As usual, if parent component re-renders itself, React will try to re-render every child of this component. It will reach a child memo component. It will see that it is wrapped in react.memo. And also it will see that it has some props. React now will stop as it will happen with any component that is wrapped in react.memo. And it will start comparing props value to it, their previous version. In our case, the prop value hasn't changed. We just passed it as a regular string. So React will see that props value hasn't changed, and then a child component will not be re-rendered. But comparing strings is easy. What will happen if instead of a string value, I pass an object here in line like this? Well, unfortunately, nothing good. Because in this case, if a parent component re-renders itself, then uh, this object during its life cycle will be recreated. React will detect this, this value as changed and child component will re-render itself as usual. Whether this child component is wrapped in react.memo or not, in this case is completely irrelevant. It still will be re-rendered on every re-render of the parent component. So why exactly this happens? Well, React uses a referential equality when it compares props. This is your good old JavaScript. When we compare primitive values, we compare them by their value. If they are exactly the same, then the result of the comparison will be true. With objects, it doesn't work that way. When we compare objects, we compare them by the reference value. Reference is nothing more than just a pointer towards an object that is stored somewhere in memory. So when we declare our variables a and b here, for both of them, we create different objects. And as a result, a value in a and value in b will be different references pointing to different objects that look exactly the same. So naturally, when we compare them, the result will be false. What that means for our props and memoized components is that uh, if we have props that are arrays, objects, or functions, we cannot just pass them in line. We need to make sure that we do not recreate those values with every re-render. We need to preserve references to those objects, arrays, or functions. 
Luckily, React helps us here. It gives us use memo and use callback. Very useful hooks that can help us preserve a reference to an object or a function throughout the renders of a component. So how does this work? Instead of this, instead of creating objects in line, we can use those hooks to preserve references to those values. It works like this. We have a use memo hook. It accepts a function that returns the value that we want to preserve a reference to and uh, an array of dependencies. Here we would pass state or props on which our value depends on. In our case, our value is static, so we don't pass anything. How does this work from a re-renders perspective? We have our parent component. Parent component re-renders itself. Use memo hook is triggered. Uh, dependencies are checked. If they haven't changed, and in our case they haven't because we don't have any, then use memo hook returns a reference to exactly the same object as it was in the previous re-render. Value from component perspective hasn't changed. So React reaches a child memo component. It checks its props. Props haven't changed. Child component is not re-rendered. And exactly the same story with functions. We cannot just create a function in line and pass it to memo as component as prop. Its value will change with every uh, parent component re-render. What we need to do here is, again, to memoize this value. We can use use memo hook here, or we can go with use callback instead. It's slightly more convenient syntax when you're dealing with functions and callbacks. So from re-render's perspective, the story is exactly the same. Parent component re-renders, use callback hook is triggered, Dependencies are checked, nothing is there, value is exactly the same. So from child component perspective, value hasn't changed, so it won't re-render itself. And of course, this logic applies to every prop of child memo component. Every non-primitive prop should be memoized. If our child component has multiple props, our code eventually will look something like this. At this point, sometimes people start remembering good old days, in quotes. Why all of this looks so complicated? In the good old days, we just used pure components everywhere and never worried about re-renders of anything. What exactly did we have then? Well, we had our class by the name component from which we would extend to write our regular component code. This component would behave in exactly the same way as we know right now. If a parent component re-renders, it would re-render uh, its child that is written like this. And then we would have optimization techniques, one of which is pure components. We would use pure components when we needed to prevent unnecessary re-renders. If we extend from pure component, then React, when encounters this component in a component's render tree, will stop and then perform check of its props. If props value hasn't changed, then this component will skip its re-render. If prop value changed, then it will re-render as usual. I hope by now this behavior sounds familiar. Because if we look at what React.memo gives us, it's exactly the same thing from prop perspective as pure component. So in case you miss the good old days when we were writing pure components, all you have to do is wrap your functional component in React.memo. Another thing that people miss from the good old days sometimes is should component update method. This was also optimization technique that was quite useful when we wanted to prevent re-renders of a component in a, a little bit more targeted way. So it would work something like this. We would have a class component that re-renders uh, every time, and then we would implement should component update method. And there we would compare next props with the previous props from the previous re-render. If this method returns false, then component will not re-render. Interestingly enough, we can implement almost exactly the same behavior with React.memo and functional components as well. This is called custom comparison function. It works something like this. We have our component. We wrap this component as usual in React.memo. 
and then we pass a function to this react.memo as a second argument. This function accepts two arguments, old and new props. And then uh, we just compare those props values between each other. If the value hasn't changed, then we return true, and this will be an indi indication to react.memo that it should not re-render this particular component. This behavior is almost exactly the same as should component update, just in reverse. And finally, now that we know how to use react.memo, let's quickly discuss when to use it. As with all performance optimization techniques, first and foremost, we should use it only when we have performance problems or anticipate that we will have performance problems in this particular place in the nearest future. It doesn't really make sense to wrap every button in react.memo. Another important thing to remember here is that react.memo optimization is something like a last resort. It's always better to use composition techniques to prevent unnecessary re-renders. They are much more robust and predictable, and they don't pollute your code with chains of use memos and use callbacks. That is all for today. Hope you found this video useful. If you rather read than watch videos, I write a lot of articles on those topics and more in my blog. Don't hesitate to check it out and see you next time.